Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today, so we're talking about problems with this Blue Eddy solar generator. We're talking about more than just the naming problems, but we're gonna talk about the problems. This is not a full review, this is not even a close review. We're literally just gonna talk about the problems with this. So if you wanna know about that, stick with us. All right, you guys, so this right here is the Blue Eddy EB3A, and it's a portable power station. Uh, like I said, it's not a full review, but just to give you a general concept of what a power station is, it's pretty much a battery pack, a uh, inverter, and the solar generator versions, uh, they have the ability to take a solar input into it, right? So with the inverter, a lot of them also have DC outputs, and this one, um, solar generators usually have, you know, AC outputs. And this one right here is a US model, so it's 110. I'm sure they probably sell European models or whatnot, but uh, that's what's really going on here. So that's generally what a solar generator is. Solar generator is, you know, ironically named because it's not really generating solar power. Um, it's really just converting power. It's really just a battery bank and inverter. That's what you really got to think about it, right? There's three main components, battery bank, inverter, and for solar generator has a solar input. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the problems. So uh, we ordered this unit uh, when it first came out. I forget how much it was, but it really went on sale first launch for like, I forget it was like 252, 260 or something like that. Um, and then after Prime Day, I think they said, oh, I don't know what the deal is, but they said, oh, we didn't sell enough units probably. So let's just sell them at cheaper cost. And I think they refunded monies or whatnot, but eventually we ended up getting this unit for right around like 209 or somewhere around $200. So for $200, I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is a great unit, okay? In mind all the problems we're about to get through. So just keep that in mind. Nobody sent this to us. We purchased this with our own monies and we have had it for a while. We've used it over all the storms that's been happening. If you're not keeping up with US news, there's storms just everywhere and power outages and brownouts and stuff like that. So uh, we, we've got, got a good enough use with it. So it's not just like first look, okay? Just keep that in mind. All right, so first problem we have with this is the build quality. A lot of people are gonna say build quality is good, but check this out. I was wondering what in the world's going on with that. Um, the line actually came with one foot missing, okay? Yes, we've had this for a while, but it was missing out of the box. All right, so uh, just keep that in mind. That's one thing. Um, if you're used to like using a unit like a Jackery or something like that, the plastic on this just feels a little bit more cheaper, right? Um, it's a little bit thinner. Um, it has some like rattling sounds, mostly from this handle. Um, when the fan kicks on, it kind of almost makes a noise, like it's a bearing sound or whatnot. A bearing, you know, about to go out or something like that. Uh, but that's not even my biggest problem, all right? So my biggest problem with this unit is this solar MPPT controller, okay? So a lot of the units on the market do not have a solar charge controller uh, or an MPPT charge controller, I mean, but this one has an MPPT tar charge controller. I forgot what that stands for, maximum power point tracking or something like that. Pretty much what it means is it maximizes the power coming into it to give it the most amount of charge, the fastest charge the way it can, okay? The issue with this unit in particular is that this MPPT control, did I say that? MPPT controller actually um, requires an X amount of wattage or power to turn on. What that is, I haven't found out exactly what it is because I don't have a variable, um, not speed, variable, power transformer type thing that could test with it but it seems it takes somewhere around maybe like five watts or something like that of continuous watts over over maybe a couple seconds in order for it to turn on and kick on charging okay why do we care about that okay the reason we care about that is because if you have one of the 60 watt panels or a smaller panel or something like that and you plug it in on a cloudy day or when sun overcast or whatnot it's just not gonna charge, right? Because there's just not enough charge to get into it. Yes, most people are gonna say, it's not a problem, there's no charge to put in there anyways. But there is, and you're gonna have to watch part two of maybe another one of these videos on how we charge that stuff with, you know, power tool batteries. But the main reason I have a problem with this is because there is a minimum um, amount of power required to start charging. Not charge, but start charging. That's the problem, okay? So uh, we're gonna demonstrate uh, some of that issue here, okay? So this right here is a DeWalt uh, DCB, sorry, DCB094K, which is the kit, okay? 
So this right here, in case you haven't noticed or you haven't seen the video, pretty much takes a power tool battery and has ability to deliver 100 watts of power delivery out, all right? So uh, I'm gonna bring you in closer and then we're gonna do all this experimenting, okay? All right, so let's get into it. So right here is the MPPT charge input and as you can see right here, it takes 12 to 28 volts DC and it will take up to 8.5 amps. So that's pretty much the max, okay? The, if you look on the manuals and all that stuff, it pretty much has the ability to take a maximum of 200 watts, okay? The good thing about this spec right here is 12 to 28 volts DC, which means you can use USB-C power delivery. Um, USB-C power delivery supports right now up to about 100 watts. If you're on all the Apple stuff, it may support a little bit more than that, but uh, USB-C is pretty much a standard, right? So if we take this right here, the DCB094K from DeWalt, it has ability to do 100 watts USB-C power delivery, okay? We're gonna connect that to this FlexVolt battery, which has, I don't know how many bars it has, uh, three, three bars, right? If I take this, uh, this is a cable that comes with it. It's a 100 watts capable uh, uh, cable. Um, not all USB-C cables are power delivery capable and not all of them can do 100 watts. This one, uh, if you haven't seen the video, go watch it. There's a full review on this, but has ability to do 100 watts, okay? And um, there's power delivery profiles and all that kind of stuff associated with it. So we need a, a device on the end of this to say, give me a hundred watts, pretty much. Like there's a sink and a source. This right here is gonna provide a source and it'll, it'll cycle through the power supply or the power delivery profiles and provide uh, the highest one that is available if there's not like a default or a primary one set. So you need this. Um, this There's a ch IC chip in here, if you know that is an integrated chip, um, that acts as a dummy and says, you and it does the uh, power delivery handshake and says give me 100 watts okay it also supports some of the lower profiles we'll show you that one later but this one does uh, do that so in order to connect this it'll work but just to show you some of the information we're going to stick this little meter thing in the middle right so if i go ahead and plug this in this is look at this it's already getting annoying um if we go ahead and plug this in here watch it'll start kicking on all right and as it kicks on um, as it cycles through, it knows that something is plugged in, so it kicks on. But if you look at the input light here, it just blinks, you know, constantly as, I don't know if you saw here, kind of cycle through some of the power supplies real quick. There's a delay on this, so it's not going to be instantaneous. And eventually, nothing happens, right? So let's do that again. Let me unplug this again from the power unit, right? Plug this in here again. Watch it again if you can. As it plugs in, um, power's on, LED lights come on and nothing really happens here. So um, it's just doing the cycling over and over as nothing happens. So that right there is a problem uh, with this unit. Sorry, let me just get this device and put it in here so hopefully you can see the screen better. Um, and we know, if you haven't seen it uh, pre from previous video, this device actually works really well. If you plug it into a MacBook, it'll give you the 100 watts, you know, continuously until the battery dies out. So to prove to you that is exactly is not the problem, we're gonna go ahead and use this. So this is a Milwaukee M18 uh, battery. Okay, this one right here specifically is a XC 6.0. Uh, that's not uh, too important, but this right here is what you call the Milwaukee M18 top off. So the idea behind this is similar to this, except you know this doesn't have solar input and it can't do that many watts and it's modified, all that kind of fun stuff. But anyways, if you look at the specs on here, uh, we have a video on this too, so if you wanna go check that out, check it out. But it's advertised as 45 watt a power delivery capable, but it actually delivers. We have all the proper cabling and all that stuff. It will deliver up to about 60 watts, okay? So we plugged it in here on this Milwaukee M18 battery with three bars. Um, at the top here, we'll go ahead and uh, enable the USB output, which is hit this button as the light comes on. Take this USB-C cable, the same cable, plug it in there. Take this same device, right? Plug it in here. Let's see if it, yeah, see if we can get you that angle. Um, you will see here as it says, come on, 45, there it goes 45. Maybe this one is stuck at four. Oh, nope, there it goes. 56 and eventually just come right up to about 60. There is a little bit of loss between, you know, cables and maybe even this thing here, but I have seen it go to 60. Um, let's see if we can get to go to 60 without this maybe. Um, so if I go in here, 
Um, let's see if it gets back up to 60. It looks like it knows it's plugging in or charge input coming in, so we'll start ramping up. And if you look here, it goes 47, um, 56, and maybe this one will top off around 56. Uh, there was another device that I was using to do this. Um, I also made my own cable, but we can talk about that one later, okay? But the point I'm trying to make here is that um, initially, I thought maybe when I first tried to do it with a DeWalt device, there was a problem with this in order, in, in like an issue with this and the compatibility with this, but that doesn't make sense because we know that this works, right? So um, the reason that it doesn't really turn on with this, I figured out is it takes a minimum amount of power on the MPPT controller to power up, right? And that power boot up time also takes time too, right? Um, so when you plug it in, as this thing is cycling through the power delivery profiles fast enough, it doesn't give it enough time for the uh, MPPT controller to stay on, okay? So that's the biggest problem I really have with this unit besides all the, maybe the, uh, you know, fit and finish, but you know, it's about $200 unit. For a $200 unit, it's a great unit though, right? So if, let me, you know, enable the button again. It's still charging at uh, 56 watts, okay? So you can do that, but just know when you are walking out with this unit, you are, you know, um, has a little, finicky, some people will say, MPPT controller. I mean, it generally works well. I'm just kind of sad that it doesn't really work with this unit because this one cycles through faster. Uh, the reason it probably works with this unit, I'm just going on a limb here, is that uh, this one, it, it doesn't cycle through the profiles as quick as this one, allowing the boot process of the other one to kick on and stay on, right? So there is that, okay? That's issue number two, which is the biggest unit. Issue number three, I'm literally just picking at stupid stuff here, is that uh, this battery on in here is a 268 uh, watt hour battery. Uh, what is the problem with that? There's no big problem because it's a pretty good battery, right? But the issue is that the, um, inverter pure sine wave inverter is only supportive up to 600 watts okay so you have a 260 watt 68 watt hour battery let's just round off 260 easier um and a 600 watt inverter right and a maximum input of 200 watts okay so essentially yes it can probably run the 600 watts all the way down to the battery but if you are going to run this continuous it's really only a 200 watt unit because if you have power going into it right and that's the power that's being consumed you can only really run all day at a maximum of 200 watts. I'm glad, don't get me wrong, I'm glad that they put the 600 watt inverter in here because sometimes you may need to run something for, you know, 600 watts for, I don't know, 10, 12, 15, 20, whatever minutes, right? But um, if you really want to talk about a unit that's going to let you run all day, this is only going to let you run all day at maybe around 200 watts, okay? Because you, if you pull more power out of the unit than you're putting in, obviously you're gonna hit zero eventually. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and close this out, right? So, um, like I said, three big uh, issues to have with this. One, fit and finish. Uh, two, the uh, finicky or whatever, MPPT charge controller. And uh, three, the advertising or whatnot, right? So, uh, I kind of understand why they did things the way they did, but you know, this is not sponsored video. Nobody sent this to us. We actually paid for this unit, like I said, around $209. And for that value or for that price, this is a great value. All the stuff that you're getting, uh, just 268 watt hours of battery, a pure sine wave unit, MPPT charge controller. If you buy all those things separately, you're nowhere gonna come close to buying all that stuff for about 200 bucks, right? So uh, for that, it's a great value. Do I wish it was a little bit different? Yes, could they potentially fix the MPPT boot or whatever issue um, for, you know, with the firmware update? It's possible, I highly doubt it, um, but it is potentially possible. Um, so maybe that's something out to Blue Eddy, although I doubt that they're pretty wa they're watching this channel. Anyways, with that, sorry being short, uh, stay tuned for our next episode, which is gonna be released on the same day as this episode, um, and we're gonna try to figure out how do we prolong the runtime of this unit using batteries that you already have. Because most people, I wanna say, at least most people I know, have at least one power tool. And with one power tool, you can use, you know, all sorts of devices and stuff to charge this unit. And I'm gonna tell you how you get around that MPPT charge controller unit issue, right? Um, using this battery, okay? So there is a way to charge this with the DeWalt setup. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and drill in that. So stay tuned for the next episode or watch it right after this one and we'll see you guys next time.